here is the canonical architecture diagram for Kafka Connect, uh, you know, for the for the Scylla source connector. You've got uh, the Scylla server in green, the base table, and then the CDC table, which we've just talked about how that works. Um, and I don't, you know, I hope as you were digesting the details of that, you didn't uh, lose the forest for the trees, because the fact that Scylla does this is just really cool. Um, again, from a connect standpoint, this is hard to do with a lot of databases. And, and when you dig into how each connector has to do this, there are just these vastly implementation dependent different edge cases and hard things. Uh, well, Scylla just makes that table and says, here are the mutations, please read them uh, in this, this trivial and partition friendly way. So um, that's really cool. You got the Scylla base table, it's creating its own CDC table. And so in the middle there, the Kafka Connect source connector, all it has to do is just read records from that table. That's the easiest kind of database read, database read there is. Uh, and it does that. So uh, that's a very cool thing. Then from there, that connector writes those records into one or more topics in the Kafka cluster. Those topics, again, themselves can be partitioned. So that source connector and the, the Connect server may be handling partitioning and, and just kind of being a Kafka producer and all those details work themselves out because of the functionality in those layers. There's also the sync connector. So you might get data into Kafka. Maybe there's, you want to run some KSQL DB queries on it, do some real-time stream processing on that data, and then write it back into Scylla uh, for access by your applications. So that sync connector is going to consume from topics and then write those into the table. So syncing, of course, there's no change data capture to do on the sync side. You're just taking messages from topics. When a new message shows up, well, you insert that row into the table in Scylla and nobody gets hurt. Again, there doesn't have to be processing in there. I may just literally read from one table and then sync, you know, source from one cluster and sync into another. Or I may add value to those messages. Here's that, that simple pipeline use case. So I've got some cluster, the big cluster over there on the left. I will CDC or source connect that into topics in my Confluent Cloud cluster or my, my local Kafka cluster. Um, and then I can sync those into other clusters. Now, obviously, uh, you know, and we've covered this here today. If you, if you know Scylla, you know it has a remarkable multi-region story. So you wouldn't use this for solving a multi-region connectivity problem. It's more, you want to think of this as a data integration tool. I've got a cluster here, and there are some tables in there that I have things happening, and I want them to happen in that different cluster over there also. And so you can use Kafka as that kind of integration pipeline. And it's not the, the nice thing about doing that is, you know, you, you could write that code yourself, you know how to query from Scylla. But the nice thing about doing this with Kafka is you get all the scaling properties of Kafka Connect, the scale properties of Kafka itself, the durability of the log. And as always happens, when you've got a pipeline, it starts dumb, and then it realizes it needs to be smart. And so you need to start layering in stream processing in the middle. All those tools are available to you in Kafka. There are a number of ways to get that done. And it just becomes this native real-time processing platform for to make your pipe a, a smart pipe instead of a dumb pipe.